Yeah. So define a key. Yeah. So last time I mentioned the most important property for a key, uniqueness. Yeah. So here when we declare this constraint, we just uh, use this unique clause. Uh, yeah. So you, any field you want to make it a key, you just uh, append this unique clause after this field name. Oh, yeah. So I forgot to do one thing. Yeah, this one. Yeah, because I, yeah, here, if I, yeah, let me try. If I click this, then I may disable my, yeah, this, the problem. So I forgot to, yeah, all right, okay. So I forgot to do one thing. Yeah, I need to, oh, yeah, let me end the show first. I need to give, yeah, give myself station the co-host so I can I can do actions on that station, not, not this machine. All right, so let's continue. Yeah. All right. Yeah, start over again. What's wrong? And the show. I'll get out. Yeah. Yeah, I saw, saw something on that one. So the caption thing. Ca a closed caption transcript generated. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's continue. A key, unique clause. Yeah, very simple. Yeah. The unique clause specifies alternate secondary keys. Secondary. Yeah, I mentioned that before. Primary key, only one primary key. Secondary key. So keys, you can have several secondary keys. So here you may ask, why we need secondary keys, right? Yeah, why we need the keys? Why we need secondary keys? Yeah, here, let me give you the main reason. Yeah. Main reason, yeah. So the secondary keys, yeah. Uh, one important usage of secondary key, uh, Fast search, fast search operation. Yeah, because we can do sorting. Why fast search? So we can sort, sort the field. That's one. Second. After we sort it, we can apply binary search. Binary search, so very fast, yeah. All right, but then, because we know if the values are not unique, we can still do the sorting, right? Yeah, but if the values are unique, then, we can build, yeah, so later there is an important technique. We, we can build index files. We can build simple index files. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So later we will learn 
uh, indexing, indexing technique. Okay, indexing technique. That technique mainly used to make the search operations very fast. Yeah. So in module five, we will study indexing technique. Yeah. And for indexing technique, if your fields have the unique values, then, then we can do the primary index. Primary in indexes. Okay? Yeah. So that is the simple and most popular indexing type. Yeah. If the values are not unique, we cannot do primary index, but we can do another type of index, clustering index. Yeah. But that one, uh, not as fast as primary index. Okay? All right. So here, at this point, you only need to know uh, when we have key fields, we can make the search operations very fast. That's the, you know, most important advantage yeah, for the key fields. Yeah. All right. The unique clause can also be specified directly for a secondary key if the secondary key is a single attribute. Yeah. Single multiple attributes. Here, remember, similar to the way we handle composite primary keys. Primary key, we have the similar situation. We have single attribute primary key and uh, multiple attribute primary key. Right? Here, so it tells you you can consider composite composite keys more than one attributes yeah. if you need yeah. if you need to use more than one attributes for a, to define a key field key to define a key yeah so you can you can do it you can use the unique clause but you need to provide more than one attributes. All right, yeah. So, yeah. It's rare, uh, although you can use that, yeah. But it's rare, yeah. Most of the time, yeah, we use single key attribute, uh, single attribute key fields. For single attribute key, the first easiest way you just uh, append this unique clause directly after the field, yeah. Or add after, yeah. You can do, you know, at a later bottom of the table, you can use unique clause to declare in this way. But here for the composite key, yeah, you do this way, okay? Yeah. Similar, you use the primary key clause to define a composite primary key field. Yeah. All right. Use the alter table step. Another way, yeah, sometimes you want to modify your table definition using this alter table statement. So you can always change your table definition. Uh, here, this is an example. Yeah. Order table, table name. Yeah. And uh, you may like to, so here, give a constraint name. It's optional. Constraint name, it's optional. Yeah. Add a constraint, you provide a constraint name. 
The reason you use a constraint name, later you can use this constraint name to refer to this constraint. You can modify it, you can delete it, you can change it, you know, if you have a name. Otherwise, if you don't have a name, later if you want to modify it, you do not have a reference. Yeah. So you can only, yeah, if you really want to change a constraint without a name, you can only do it in this way. Yeah. So you access the DBMS to delete it. Yeah. So you delete it. Yeah. Yeah. So you can select this constraint and delete it. Then you create a new one. Okay. So you define a new one. Yeah. So in that way. If you have a name, so then you can just use the name to make the change. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's pretty simple. Yeah. So that's about a, a key. Yeah. Constraint, out now, and a default value. Yeah. Here we look at so these two. These two constraints closely related. Closely related. Okay. Not now, default value. First, constraint not now. Yeah. So, you know, some of the fields we do not want to accept no value. Yeah. Sometimes for some reason, yeah. for some business reason, so you do not allow users use the no value for certain special fields. Yeah, so you just uh, append this not and all constraint yeah, after that attribute. When an attribute does not allow the null value, yeah, here, explicit way. Yeah. First type, explicit way. Yeah. So here, for example, Pino, Pino, so that refers to the company database I upload. So now you can download up a uh, company database script yeah it's called a company dot sql yeah i just upload it you know in part d so you can download it now uh, so then you run install uh you know in 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 your mysql yeah in that database pino refers to project number Project number. Yeah. In one table, okay? In one of the tables, project number, yeah. Not now, okay? Yeah. Because you don't want you don't want any project number not provided. Yeah. If it is unknown, you would rather not enter that entry. Not enter that entry. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right. Implicit, yeah, there is a case, implicit. So you do not need to say anything. Yeah. So that implicit case only f used for primary key. Yeah. yeah. If it's not primary key, you have to use the explicit way. Yeah. Primary key, you do not need to say that. Okay, yeah, so that's the implicit. Not at all. Okay. All right. Then default value. Default value. So where the value of that field is not provided, so the default value is used for the input. Yeah. How to how to declare default value by appending the clause default after that you enter the default value. Yeah. The default value is used in any new tuple if the explicit value is not provided for that attribute. Yeah. When you, yeah, so this is used input, uh, insert statement. In the insert statement. 
when you apply insert statement to enter the data, yeah. So there are several cases. Yeah. So here you can see several cases. Yeah. Usually you need to provide explicit data values for each field. Yeah. All right. But all right. So here let me list insert a row. Insert a row. So there are several cases. The first case, enter explicit data. Okay, all right. Yeah. Second case, yeah. yeah, because sometimes you may skip a few fields. When you skip you, a few fields, that means you do not provide the values for those fields. So then, that means the values are not available, right? Not available uh, use the null value. Yeah. Third, yeah. use the default value. Use the default value, yeah. Then actually for MySQL, there is another case, MySQL. Yeah. MySQL here, it is a little different. Yeah. So here only, but only for MySQL. Yeah. For other DBMS, it could be different. MySQL has the case number four, that is, I mentioned before, auto increment primary key values. So it's called auto increment. Auto increment only, f uh, only for the primary key value. Okay, yeah. Primary key values. Yeah. So four cases. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So here. Uh, if no default clause is specified, yeah, so we need to see in these four cases, yeah, if default value is default clause is not specified, yeah, then yeah, we need to see if the null if we can take the null value. Okay? Yeah. So you look at if there is a not null constraint, if there is not a null constraint, then you cannot take null value, then the input is rejected. Okay? So you do not provide the default value, and you do not allow null value. Yeah. So then, and you do not provide explicit value. So there is no option, so the DBMS has to reject your insert statement in that situation. Yeah. All right. With not nulls, sorry, so that's the without case. Yeah. Oh, sorry, without not null, you can use null value, right? Yeah, without, yeah. With not null, yeah, I just explained the with not null constraint, so insertion Failure, yeah. So that means the DBM rejects your insert operation. Yeah. With, yeah, without, no, no, yeah, no problem. You just take the DBMS takes the not no value. Yeah. yeah. All right. So pretty, uh, you know, straightforward. Yeah. All right. So that's the. We finish uh, part C. Yeah. All these constraints very simple. Yeah. Yeah. For an advanced, a complex constraint, yeah, then you have to write SQL complex SQL statements commands with some logic, with some complicated logic. Yeah. Yeah. All right.
Yeah, so let's move to uh, part D. So we look at more SQL constraints. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, uh, more advanced than these basic SQL constraints. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. D point one create user defined constraints. All right, so in part C, we learn some very simple basic constraints. Okay, you just use some simple clauses so you can define those simple constraints. But here, yeah, a little harder, yeah, but not, not too complicated. Yes, still pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. So you do not need to write a lot of code. Yeah, all right. So let's look at create a user defined constraints, relatively simple constraints. Yeah. All right. First, constraint name. Yeah. I just explained before. Yeah. Here we need to use constraint name. Yeah. So for convenience. Yeah. Because later we can manipulate those constraints. Yeah. A constraint may be given a constraint name. It's optional. Yeah following the keyword constraint. Yeah. Properties of a constraint name. Yeah. Giving name to constraint is optional. The names of all constraints with a particular schema must be unique. Yeah. Yeah. Inside one schema. Yeah. We know under the same database must be unique. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, when you need to refer to those constraints, yeah, there is a confusion, right? So for DBMS, DBMS does not know which one you want to modify. Yeah, yeah so this requirement yeah, must be unique. Yeah. A constraint name is used to identify a particular constraint in case the constraint must be dropped later and replaced with another constraint, yeah. drop it, yeah, and then you create a new one, yeah. So that's the typical way that people use this constraint. Yeah, yeah. here you can see uh, it says how do you change a constraint? You just drop it and create a new one. Yeah. So you do not modify on top of it. Yeah, <laughs> to modify it because it's more complicated. Yeah. So you would rather drop it and create a new one. Yeah. So that way, much simpler for DBMS. Yeah. All right, yeah. All right, yeah. Define a constraint with check clause. Yeah. So this check clause, yeah. a simple way to define user you know, yeah, you, to, to create a user defined simple constraint. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the previous one. Yeah. All right. Create user defined constraint. Yeah. On the attribute. First, you can do it on that attribute directly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's one way because it's relatively simple. Yeah. So you can do it. Or you can do it later. Yeah. So how to do it after an attribute? So you can use this check clause to specify certain condition. Yeah. Certain condition. Yeah. Here, let's look at example. Yeah. This example, D number. So here, D number refers to the department number. For example, yeah, still in our company uh, company table, there is a field D number, so we use for the department number. 
Okay? So you, you know what we are doing here. Right? Integer not now, then you want to enforce, you want to create a condition. So you ask DBMS to enforce that condition. Yeah. So the check clause. In this check clause, you use inequalities to specify the range for the department number. D number greater than zero and a D number less than 20. Yeah. So the valid department numbers, yeah. for example, yeah. if a user enters a department number out of this range, then reject it. Okay? So DBMS detects a violation of the constraint, user-defined constraint. So then that input is rejected. Yeah. That simple. Okay? Yeah. On a domain, yeah. So here we can use this check clause to provide specific information for a domain. So when you define a domain, so what is a domain? Yeah. Domain, so yeah, because when you want to specify the data range for certain fields, you may need this domain concept. Some fields can take values in certain domains. So domain, that concept. The, the range, valid ranges for some data fields. So that's the domain concept. Yeah. All right? So, yeah. so let's look at the domain. Yeah. After a domain definition, you define a domain. Yeah. Because after you define a domain, you can apply this domain to several different data fields. Yeah. Yeah. So for convenience. Yeah. Otherwise, if you do not define a domain, every time when you need to define a field with this specific data range, you need to do it explicitly. Okay? You need to do it explicitly. But if you define a domain, you just apply that domain to this attribute. Yeah. All right. So how to do it after a domain definition? Yeah. Look at this example. Create domain, and you have a domain name. Yes. Yeah. So, so you, this is the you, you domain the name of the domain. Because later you need to apply this domain to several different fields. So you use this name. Yeah. D underscore num. Yeah. Department number. Yeah. So usually you may feel so this data range could be used in several places. For example, several places. Then you may like to define a domain. Yeah. As integer data type, then check the range for this domain. Yeah. All right. On the table, yeah. on the table, you can, you can, yeah, because in, after you define the table, you can apply some user defined constraint. After a table definition, tuple based constraint. We know table organize the data as tuples. Yeah. Each element in a table is a tuple. Okay? Yeah. So here, when you define constraints on the table, so you apply your constraints on the tuples in this field. So we call it tuple-based constraints. Yeah. So how to do it? Example. Yeah. Look at here. Okay. Yeah. 
create table department. Now, that's the table definition. So the first part, table definition. Then at the end of the definition, now you want to apply some specific condition. Yeah. On all the tuples in this table. So you use this check clause. Then what condition you want to apply on each tuple. Yeah. Department on underscore create underscore date, create date less than equal to manager underscore star underscore date. Yeah. Yeah. Because in the table, there is a value called a manager star underscore star date. Yeah. Yeah. For example, there is a table field called that. Okay, So this is a table field. A table field. For this table field, the user may need to enter. The user may need to enter manager underscore star date, the value of this field. But when the user enter this date value, the user can enter any value, right? Yeah, any value. So here, if you apply this constraint, user-defined constraint on the table, so you just ask the DBMS do some simple checking. Yeah. Because if the department create date, yeah, DBMS knows the department. Yeah, so here, yeah, yeah. So here, I feel, so here, how does the DBMS know department create data, right? So this should be another, another table field. Another table field. Okay? Yeah. Otherwise, how does the DBMS know that, right? Yeah. Another table field. Or, you know, Or if you use this name, it refers to the table create date. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like not. You know, how do you know? Uh, the specific name is like this, right? Yeah. Yeah. If the DBMS knows that's the table create date, then it's easy, okay? It just check the table create date, then compare it with a manager star date, yeah. And uh, then, if this condition is violated, reject it, yeah, reject it. Otherwise, it, it's just another table field name, okay? Yeah, some you know uh, simple proof. Data correctness proof. Yeah. 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 Just, uh, uh, you know, something like this. Here, it's an example. Yeah. In our company database, we don't have this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, here, some of the examples you see here, we do not have them in the company. Yeah. So, if you look at the definition of our company database, so we don't have these things. Okay. Here, it just use examples. Example, it can do more than we have in the company database. Yeah. The background is company database. Okay? So the background is company database. Yeah. But here, some of the fields, some of the domains not available. Yeah, not available in our company database. Yeah. 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 All right. So here, just give you some idea, some simple basic ideas. All right. Next topic. Yeah, it's an important one. Referential integrity constraint, D.2. Yeah, I mentioned this before, the foreign key constraint. Yeah. I mentioned this foreign key constraint before. Yeah. Here, let us do some, you know, 
complete study this topic. Yeah, integrity, referential integrity constraint. Yeah. All right. The goal, the goal, maintain consistency among tuples in two relations. Yeah. The two relations, uh, there are two tables. They have some very special relation, relationship. Yeah. And uh, here, we want to ask the DBMS to help us maintain consistency of certain fields. Yeah. Certain fields, okay? among tuples in two relations. Well, that, that's the goal, the detail. Yeah. So here I need to explain the detail. Yeah. What? Between two relations, yeah. Yeah. these two relations, they have different roles. The first relation, we call the referencing relation. We use R1, capital R1, yeah. referencing. It refers to the second table, so referencing relation. Second one, referenced relation, we call it R2. Yeah, all right. So then, notations, yeah. T1, yeah, so in order to draw diagrams to explain the details, so we need to choose some Notations, yeah. Little t1, a tuple in R1. Yeah. Little t2, a tuple in R2. Yeah. So now, let us use some diagram to show you the relationship. Yeah. All right, here, look at this table. Yeah. Here I draw two tables. R1 table, employee, R1 table. R2 table, department table. Yeah. Now let's look at how do we define the relation between them yeah. on certain fields. Yeah. T1, a tuple in R1. Yeah. T2, a tuple in R2. In T1, we need to refer a special value from T2, yeah. Value for a special field in T2, yeah. Actually, the primary key field, yeah. Primary key field, all right, yeah. So T1, there is one field, one special field. Here, we use the DINO field, department number, DINO, yeah. So in the employee table, each employee has a department number, right? So each employee has a department number value. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But here, because this value, this field, it's not in the department table. So we want to use a slightly different name as in the department. Yeah. So here we use D and O because it's in the employee table. So we don't want, want, it, want this name confused with the department number field in the department table. Yeah. Department table has, has a field, refers to the department number also, so they should use two different names. Otherwise, people may get confused. Yeah, yeah. so here, Dino, so in department number, this name is changed to D number, okay, D number, yeah. But they, in business, they refer to the same object, same department number object, okay, yeah, all right, yeah. So here, D number in department table, it's a primary key, yeah. it's a primary key. Okay, all right. So now, 
Let's look at the value. D no value in the employee table. D no value, yeah? So it has to point to certain value in the department table, yeah? Point in this way, yeah? So this relationship. So we want DBMS to help us. Keep track of the data. Yeah. So when, when the data is changed, make sure consistent, consistency. Okay? All right. Yeah. So we call this Dino a special name. We call it a foreign key. Foreign, yeah? Because primary key is outside, outside the employee table. So it's foreign. Yeah. Foreign key concept. That's the exact meaning of foreign key concept. Yeah. Yeah. So here you can see, yeah. we need to use this diagram to explain the relationship. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Another case, yeah. the D no value is null. Yeah. It's possible. Think about, yeah. so if you, let's think about a real world situation. Yeah. If one employee, one new employee, yeah, just uh, gets into the, this company, yeah, and it, it is possible there is no department assigned to it, this employee yeah, for, for a short period, yeah. for a short period. There is no department assigned to this employee. Now, how can you enter the department number for the, the role corresponding to this employee, right? Yeah. So in that situation, you can use the null value. Yeah. The foreign key value, it is allowed to use a null value. Otherwise, reject it. If you reject it, then you cannot enter the employee into the em employee table. Yeah. You cannot enter that new employee information into that employee table. Yeah. So that's not coming yet. Okay? Yeah. So this uh, special case uh, is allowed. The null value. Okay? All right. Concrete example. Now let me use a concrete example to to give you a better explanation of this foreign key uh, concept. Yeah. All right. So the first table yeah, here, employee table. Employee table, you can see the first line, job table if exists employee. Yeah, yeah because here, let me explain the background. People use this sentence, job table if exists employee. If you do not, yeah, let's imagine if we do not include this line. Yeah. All right. So then sometimes you run this table definition in this database. Yeah. But the table is already created. The table employee already created in the current database then you are not allowed to create it another time, okay? Yeah, so here the situation is this. Yeah. Think about, if it's not there, so this, this line, not there, just imagine, okay? All right. Yeah. If it's not there, because sometimes you may want to modify the table. Yeah, you'll change you know, some fields here, there, yeah. add something here, drop something there. So you modify your table definition. After the modification, you want to run this table creation statement again in your database. But DBMS does not allow you to run. Yeah. Why? Because the old table already there. 
it does not allow you to override the old table definition. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So it does not. So you cannot assume by default when you run table creation statement in your DBMS when the old table still there, yeah, then you get an error, okay? You get a syntax error. You cannot do it. Yeah. All right. To solve that problem, then this first line is added. Okay. Job table if exists employee. Yeah. So then no complaint. Yeah. So it drop DBMS drops the old table first. Then no table called employee name. Yeah. So then you can run your new definition of the employee table. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, another meaning, job table if it exists. Be yeah, because the first time when you run this SQL command, there is no table there. Okay? No table, then fine. No problem. It does not exist. Yeah. So, job table if exists. Yeah. So here, the logic. Yeah, logic is there. Okay? Otherwise, if it does not exist, no complaint. Okay? No complaint. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that's the, the meaning of first line. Yeah. All right, so now, Second department table, yeah. We still have this job table if exists line, yeah. yeah. So the details, department table. Here we mainly look at the two special fields, yeah. In employee table, we look at this Dino field, not now, yeah. All right. Then in the department table, we want to look at the D number field. Yeah, this one. Yeah. So we want to define a foreign key between. Yeah. All right. How to do it? Then we need to write this foreign key constraint explicitly. Yeah. Yeah. There are several ways to write. Okay. Yeah. Here, uh, this straightforward way, yeah. we define constraint. Yeah. Constraint keyword, then you give a special name for it. Yeah. EMP refers to employee. Yeah. DEPT refers to department. FK, foreign key. Yeah. Yeah. You just choose some name convenient for you, so you know the meaning of this constraint. Yeah. Then, the syntax. Yeah. You specify foreign key parenthesis specific field name. Yeah, Dino here. Yeah. Then references yeah, to a different table. You need to tell DBMS which table is the reference to table. So references department table. Yeah. Which field? Yeah, department table parenthesis D number. Yeah. D number. Okay. All right. So that's the the way we. Define foreign key constraint. Yeah. All right. So note, yeah, there is a. So when you, when you want to run these commands, in a DBMS, there is a condition. Okay. Be careful. Yeah. Because sometimes, if you do not pay attention to the details, sometimes you may get an error. So when you run, you get some problem. So what's the condition? Create the tables in some right order. Yeah. In right order. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because here, when you create employee table, in your employee table, when you define foreign key constraint, you refer to the department table. So the DBMS wants to make sure the department table already exists. Already exists. You cannot refer 
you cannot refer to a non-existing table. Non-existing table, you cannot do that. Yeah. So you need to make sure department table has been created when before you define this foreign key constraint. Yeah. So here I, I say before you define this foreign key constraint. I do not say before you define this table. Yeah. Because if you define the foreign key constraint inside inside this table definition, then you need to consider the condition if the department table already there, okay? Yeah. If it is not there, then you need to delay. Yeah, so this statement, you, you can delay it, okay, right? Yeah, because department table has not been created, so you cannot run this definition, constraint definition. Yeah. So you have to delay it after the apartment table has been created. Then you can run this definition. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Rule, when you define a foreign key, the reference to the table must be created. Yes. Yeah. If it's not created, you need to delay your action. That simple, okay? Delay your action after it is created. Yeah. So you may ask how to delay your action, right? Yeah. How to delay your action? Yeah. yeah. Alter table action, right? Remember, we have that alter table action. Yep. Yeah. So one student want to get in. So I need to use. I need to use this. This one, yeah, to do it, yeah. All right, yeah. So that part you need to be careful. Deep on three, foreign keys with circular references. Yeah. So this is a special case. So what's the meaning of circular references? Yeah. A table references itself. So you form a circle. A table references itself, a self-circle, okay? Yeah. It is allowed, but you need to do the foreign key definition carefully. Yeah. Foreign key, that constraint definition carefully. Yeah. The rule, make, yeah, I just talk about, yeah, talk about. Only after the table has been created, you can refer to it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Foreign key with circular references. Here, let's use a special example in that company database. Yeah. Meaning of circular reference. A table references itself. Yeah. You may wonder how is it possible that a table references itself? Yeah, it's possible, okay? It is possible in business, in real-world business. It is possible. A table references itself, yeah. yeah. That is, the referencing table it is the same as the reference the table. Yeah. We have example in our in, uh, company database company database. Employee table, we have that situation. Employee table, okay? All right. Possibility, yeah. here, look at this employee. Yeah. In this employee table, there is a supervisor, super underscore SSN. That means the social security number for a supervisor. Here you can see a supervisor, supervisor, that person itself, itself, it's also an employee, right? Yeah. Supervisor, any supervisor we also treat. So everyone in the company we treat as an employee. Okay? 
Yeah. So here our understanding is like this. Yeah. Every, everyone in the company, so is treated as an employee. Yeah. But some company, uh, sorry, some employees, they are also supervisors of other employees. Yeah. So we need to give them such role, yeah, supervisor role. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. So here we have this field, supervisor underscore SSN. So we assign another employee. We use the SSN primary key. SSN is the primary key to tell that particular employee is the supervisor of the current one, current employee. That relationship. Okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So here you can see both referencing table and the reference the table, they are all employee table. Same employee table. Yeah. Self reference. Circular reference. Yeah. So you should be careful about that circular, you know. All right, yeah. Rule. When you define a foreign key, the reference to table must be created. Yeah. So here, think about if you want to define foreign key inside employee table, you cannot do it. Why? Because it has not been created. Employee table has not been created. How can you refer, how can you, in your foreign key constraint definition, how can you refer the same table employee at the same time? Contradiction. Yeah. The solution is simple. Remember, I just mentioned, we delay. We delay that definition. Let us define the table first. After the table is created, then we use that altered table statement to define. Yeah. 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 Or, so you know, so you, def you just, you, or you just define a foreign key constraint yeah. after the table is created. Okay? Yeah. All right. How to define a foreign key that refers to a table that has not been created? Yeah. Here, let's look at a solution. Solution to circular references. Yeah. All right. Solution steps. Yeah. Do not define the foreign key constraint within the referencing table. No. Delay it. No. No. So not ready. You cannot define at that time. Yeah. After the table has been created, use the alter table statement to define the foreign key constraint. Yeah. Here you can see how useful this alter table statement. Yeah. Otherwise, you cannot solve this problem. When we need to delay some action, some actions, so we need to use this altered table statement. Yeah. All right. Examples. Yeah. After employee table is created, so then we can do this. Alter table employee. Yeah. Add a foreign key. Yeah. Yeah. So here we do not we do not give it a name. Yeah. So add foreign key. Yeah. Which field you want to add foreign key? Parenthesis super underscore SSN. Yeah. References employee parenthesis SSN, the primary key, SSN. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That's the solution. Yeah. Pretty simple. But you need to understand the logic. Why we do it in this way? Yeah. Because we have to follow that rule. Yeah. 
All right. All right. D point four violation. Yeah. I only have five minutes. Yeah. So violation for for uh, referential integrity constraints. Yeah. 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 Sometimes, you know, you may do something. Yeah. So you that cause the violation. You need to do some action, some queries, that you cause some violation of the integrity, uh, referential integrity constraint. Yeah. Then you have several options you can take. Yeah. When referential integrity constraints is violated, yeah. violation situation, yeah. when you do certain actions, you may cause the violation. Yeah. When tuples are inserted or deleted, yeah. tuples in the related tables, referencing table, or reference the table, yeah. some tuples inserted, deleted. Yeah. So you, you may cause some violation. When a foreign key or primary key attribute value is modified in those related tables. Yeah. All right. Default action. Yeah. Here. Default action, if you do not do anything, do not tell DBMS to do anything, there is a default action. So what's that? Reject the update operation that will cause a violation. If you do not tell DBS to do anything special, then DBM just reject it. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Do not allow you to make any such change. Okay? But sometimes it's not convenient because if there is a rejection, then you have to fix the problem first. Yeah. All right. But you have other options. Optional actions you can take. Yeah. All right. Referential triggered actions. Yeah, here we call referential triggered actions. Yeah. You need to trigger these actions. Yeah. The violation would trigger these actions. Okay. Yeah. Any violation would trigger. Yeah, referential violation would trigger these action. First, set null. You can set one related field, its value, yeah, because, for example, the primary key, it refers, is removed. Yeah. So that row is deleted. Then you cannot take the old value there, but you do not know the new value. Yeah. But you do not want to, you do not want to, Take a rejection. Yeah. You want to make it through. Yeah. You don't want to take a rejection. Okay? Yeah. So in that situation, you can set null. You, you need to tell DBMS. Yeah. When that happens, set null value. Yeah. Because you can fix the problem later. Yeah. So that's one option. Yeah. Another cascade. Cascade from the name, you can see when you change one particular field, at the same time, you need to change the value for value, new value, update the new value in several other related places. That's the cascade type change. Okay? You change a data value at one location but you need to do the cascade type changes, other places, all other tables that reference the same value, the value you just changed, yeah, you need to do the cascade updates. So another action, option you can take. Yeah. All right, so yeah. set default, yeah. then sometimes yeah, you want to set default value. There is some appropriate value you can set default value. Yeah. And then the last one, restrict. Restrict 
That means the rejection. Rejection. Okay? All right. That is the default case. That is default case. Okay? All right. Yeah. So that's the, you know, four optional actions you can do when a violation, referential violation occurs. Yeah. All right. So that example, so we, we, we look at these example next time. Okay? Yeah. So I show you how to do these actions in a SQL command. Question? Oh, yeah. Let me look, look at the chat message. Two chat message. Yeah, syllable. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Right. So as we discussed last time, uh, we have to change. Yeah, it's not correct. Yeah. So the uh, yeah, current. So we may need two more weeks. Okay. So after this date, because March the 6th, that's our homework due date. Yeah. After our homework due date. So when we need to, you know, I need to grade, I need to do review, then you need to do preparation. So you may, you may have two weeks to prepare for your midterm, but I like to do it before our spring break. Yeah. We have a spring break the last week of the March. Yeah. But before that week, we do our midterm before the spring break. Okay. So that's our plan. Yeah. Yeah. So I will, I will send an announcement to update that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, ex yeah. So here I said, said that midterm too early. Yeah. March the 6th, that's too early. Yeah. Yeah. Quiz number two, homework question from, yeah. Quiz number two from module two, only module two. Okay. Quiz number two, uh, I do not give you question from module three. But homework questions, you have part A, part B from module three, yeah, but not part C, okay? Only part A, part B uh, of module three and uh, module one part module two yeah, for the homework, yeah. We can revise accordingly and take the test. Yeah, right, right, yeah. So you, uh, and uh, I will give you review sessions. In my review sessions, I will go through, uh, you know, uh, all those questions that I see you, you know, you, you, you have some, some problems, okay? If a question too easy, I may skip, yeah. But if question is not that easy, I will explain, yeah. So we will have review sessions, okay? Yeah. So one or two. If one is not enough, then we do two. Okay, one or two review sessions. Yeah. All right, so that's the questions. All right, so that's it.